Hello everyone, welcome back. We are going to be doing a hopefully somewhat quick review um, from week 14 for Essentials and Classical Conversations. Um, if you're not a CC family and you're just wanting to learn a little bit more about active and passive voice, you know, your verbs and um, complex sentence structures, imperative sentence purposes, and the SVT IODO sentence pattern, well, welcome. You do not have to be with classical conversations um, to learn a little bit with us. So, we're just going to go ahead and um, jump right in. Those are the things that are covered um, for week 14. And we're going to go ahead and start with um, our verbs. Uh, it has been a while since we dove into verbs. Uh, that deep dive in the land of verbs happened in week two. So I'm just going to review real quick. Um, verb voice. Um, is one of our attributes. There's four attributes um, of our verbs. Um, the attributes are number, singular or plural, person, first, second, or third person, and voice, which could be active or passive, and then we have our mood, which could be indicative, imperative, or subjunctive. But again, we're looking at one of the attributes today, and that is going to be our verb voice. Verb voice is the manner in which a verb functions in relation to the subject. So, with active voice, our subject is active and performs the action. Makes sense. Passive voice, the subject is passive or in waiting. Passive um, they're going to be the one receiving the action. We'll look at these sentence examples, okay? The mother loved her child. The mother is performing the action. The mother is loving the child. I admire her voice. I am performing the action. I am the one admiring. I admire her voice. Ben saved the girl. Ben is performing the action. Ben is saving the girl. So our subjects in all of these sentences are the ones that are active. They are performing the action. Okay? Now, if we look at our passive examples, we've switched these sentences around, okay, to make them passive voice. The child was loved by her mother. Okay? So now, instead of the mother performing the action, the subject is receiving that action. Okay, our subject has changed, and the subject in this sentence now is receiving the action. It's receiving that love from the mother. Okay? With the, her voice. Her voice was admired by me. Okay? Voice is now the subject and it is being admired. It is receiving the action. The girl was saved by Ben. Our girl is now our subject, and she is receiving the action. She is being saved by Ben. Okay? So that's how they switch around. Um, there are some rules, and I've already notated the different parts of speech, but when changing from active to passive voice, and we're going to do a sentence and go over one in just a minute. Only a transitive verb can change from the active voice to the passive voice. It has to be a transitive verb in order to change from active to passive voice. And it will stay a transitive verb. Loved is our transitive verb. And as we've changed our sentence around, loved is still our verb. It's still our transitive verb. Same with admire admired and saved and saved okay next whenever we're changing from the active to the passive voice a helping verb will be needed we don't have a helping verb here but when we switch our sentence around the child was loved her voice was admired the girl was saved we've added was 
because they're helping verbs in these sentences to change them from active to passive. The direct object will become the subject, okay? So in our active voice, child is our direct object. The mother loved whom or what? Her child. Our child is the direct object. The direct object, when we switch our sentence to passive, becomes our subject. Same with voice. We admired what? Voice. Voice was our direct object. It has become our subject. Same. Saved. Whom or what? The girl. The girl was our direct object, so the girls become the subject. Okay? Just some rules when changing from active to passive. The subject will become the object of the preposition. Okay? Whenever we're changing from the active to the passive voice, our subject, which was mother, now becomes the object of the preposition. The child was loved by who? By her mother. And the subject here was I, which becomes me, okay? Her voice was admired by who? By me, becomes the object of the preposition. The subject, same here, is going to become the object of the preposition. Ben saved the girl. Ben was the subject. Now the girl was saved by Ben. We have a preposition and an object of the preposition, which was our subject. Okay? So those are some of the rules when we're changing from active to passive. You can um, always pause this, come back, um, you know, just stop and copy and jot this down if this information you find it helpful and you'd like to just have it on record, you're welcome to come back and of course watch this as many times as you need to. But we're going to go ahead and get into a sentence and change a sentence, look at it, um, from active to passive voice. We are going to use one of the examples from our materials. The tornado ravaged the town. So you can write this down and do it along with me or you can just follow along. The tornado ravaged the town. Okay. The tornado ravaged the town. Let's go ahead and label our sentence and see what parts of speech we have in our sentence. Um, this is an active. Our subject is performing it, but let's go ahead and show which parts of speech. Who or what is our sentence about? Who or what ravaged the town? The tornado. Correct. So the tornado is going to be our subject. The tornado is a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. It is a noun. The tornado did what? It ravaged. So our verb is going to be ravaged, and we're not sure what kind of verb yet, so we're going to leave a space. Um, ravaged, our verb, is it transferring that action of ravaging directly to something? Did it ravage something specific, particular, directly? It did. The town. So it's being transferred to town. This makes this transitive verb and makes town our direct object. Okay. And then the word the, it is just giving us more information which town, the town. It's an adjective specifically. It's an article adjective. So you can label it AJ or AA. The same with the word the here. Which tornado? The tornado. Can that be an adjective or an article adjective? Okay, so we have an SVT DO sentence pattern. We do have our transitive verb. We said we have to have a transitive verb to change a sentence from active to passive. Um, our subject here is performing the action. The tornado, our subject, ravaged the town. So it is performing the action. It is active. This is active voice. So, in order to change, we, we know we have our transitive verb, so we know that'll work. Let's see, how would we go about doing this? 
instead of saying the tornado ravaged the town, we know our subject, our direct object is going to become our subject. Yeah, yeah, direct object becomes our subject. So the town, we need a helping verb, was ravaged by the tornado. So it is going to change the town. was ravaged by the tornado. Okay, so this was our active voice. Active. And this is our passive voice. Okay? Our direct object has become our subject. Who or what is the sentence about? Who or what? was ravaged by the tornado, the town. So the town is going to be our subject. It is person, place, thing, activity, or idea. It's a noun. So you have subject noun. And the town was what? It was ravaged. So was is a helping verb. So it's our helping verb and it was ravaged. We have our transitive verb which we know because we said it has to be a transitive verb and it will remain a transitive verb. So we know this is transitive, but what is our action being transferred to? Was the tornado ravaged? No, this time, this is why this is passive. The town was ravaged. Now it's receiving the action. The action is being received by the subject. It's not doing it. The town isn't ravaging, but the town was ravaged. And that's the difference between active voice or subject is performing the action. It is doing the ravaging. And now with passive voice, it's receiving. Our subject is receiving the action. The town was ravaged. The town didn't ravage. The town was ravaged. Okay. And then we have the word by, that's one of our prepositions. So by the tornado is a prepositional phrase. So our preposition by makes tornado by what? It was right by the tornado. That's our object of the preposition. So what else happened? We said our subject will become the object of the preposition. So our subject tornado became our object of the preposition. The is another article adjective describing which tornado? The tornado. And that is how we change from active to passive voice. These are some of our rules and helpful things to help us um, as we're changing. Sometimes we can look at it and just change it, but these are our rules and kind of guidelines when we're changing from active to passive voice. We are going to go ahead and now look at our review for our complex sentence structure and our imperative purpose. It's also been a while since we went over these, I can't remember, maybe week seven. I can't remember when we did this, but it's been a while. We just introduced the complex structure last week. An imperative purpose it may have been week seven when we talked about that um, our complex sentence structure we have a complex sentence we had our four structures we have simple compound um, let's say I can't even remember how I did now simple compound complex compound complex okay simple compound complex, compound complex. So we're at complex. Okay, what is a complex sentence? We just talked about dependent and independent clauses. So we'll have one, at least one independent clause One independent clause, my purple's running out. Ah, one independent clause plus one or more dependent 
also known as subordinate clause within our sentence, and that is going to equal a complex sentence structure. So for us to have a complex sentence structure, we had to have one independent clause, a clause, it's a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. An independent clause means that it's a complete thought, a complete sentence. It's independent and it can stand alone. So we have one sentence that can stand alone within there. And then our dependent or subordinate clause, it's also a clause. So it's gonna contain a subject and a verb, but it's gonna be dependent. It's dependent on something else to exist. It's not a complete thought. It can't stand alone by itself. It's got to be attached to this independent clause in order to exist. So we're going to have at least one or more of these dependent or subordinate clauses along with our one independent clause. And that's going to make it complex. And then, as far as our imperative purpose, imperative is giving a command or a demand or a request. Sit down. Do your homework. We're telling someone to do something, but we're not stating the subject. We're not writing the subject. So, like, excuse me, nose edition. We'll look at this sentence. Um, sit while I fix you a plate. It. While I fix you a plate. If we have someone over and we're trying to be friendly and we want to just fix something for them, sit. Well, I fix you a plate. Who or what is this sentence about? Who are we telling to sit while we fix them a plate? We don't see it. It's not there. With imperative sentences, this is where we have our implied you. It's understood. It's not seen. We can't see it, but we know that we're speaking to someone. So it's you. It's implied you. In that case, we would write our you in parentheses, and that's going to be our subject. You is a pronoun. So we have our subject, it's just an implied you. Now we'll ask ourselves some more questions. You do what? What are we telling you to do? Sit. You sit. Okay. Uh, sit is going to be our verb. Okay. And actually we should backtrack a bit because We've just been learning. What do we do before we start labeling? We try to identify our clauses. Um, and we're trying to decide if we have a simple, a compound, or a complex sentence. Sit while I fix you a plate. Is there something in here that we could say just by itself? We could say sit. Sit. You understood. Sit. We can say that. That's a complete thought. It's a demand, a command. While I fix you a plate. While I fix you a plate, it leaves us asking more questions. It, um, it's not a complete thought. It leaves us wanting to know more, asking more questions. So that makes it dependent or subordinate. Okay? So we have independent, dependent, or subordinate clause. If this clause is separate from this clause, is there anything following sit? Is there anything else being given to sit anywhere particular, on anything particular, anything that could rename or describe our subject? No. So it's just going to be intransitive. There's no action being transferred by this verb. Just sit. So now we're going to look at our dependent or subordinate clause. Okay, who or what is this sentence about? Who? Who fix you a plate? Who's going to fix you a plate? I'm going to fix you a plate. I is going to be our subject. I is a pronoun and a word that we use in order to avoid repetition. I. 
I is doing what? I is fixing. I fix. Okay, so that's going to make fix our verb. We're not sure what kind of verb yet, so we're going to leave that blank. We're going to ask some more questions. Is there something directly particular that is being fixed? What's being fixed? Is you being? No, you's not being fixed. Fix what? Fix a plate. So fix is being transferred directly to a plate. A plate needs to be fixed. So transitive verb, it's transferring action to plate. Plate becomes our direct object. And then we just learned about our sentence pattern with our new SVT IODO. Do we remember what an indirect object is? An indirect object is a noun or pronoun that's going to come between our transitive verb and our direct object and it's going to tell to whom or for whom this action is done. It's going to tell who is receiving the direct object. Who's receiving the plate? Who is it being done for? Who's the plate being fixed for? Who's receiving it? You. That makes you our indirect object. And then A is uh, a more descriptive word, a modifier. It's, it's describing and telling us um, what plate or which plate? A plate. Fixing A plate. Which makes it just an adjective. Okay. Oh, we have one more word. Let's see. While. If you've been studying your conjunctions and your relative pronouns, um, trying to identify whether we have adverbial or adjectival clauses. We know if we have an adverbial clause, our clause will act like an adverb. It will modify our verb, adjective, or another adverb in the sentence. And it will start with a subordinating conjunction or a www.asia.wub word. And those words are what? When, while, where, as, since, if, although, where, as, unless, because, when, while, we have a subordinating conjunction. So we have a connector, a subordinating conjunction. That is gonna make this while I fix you a plate. Do what while I fix you a plate? Sit. It's modifying our verb, so it makes it adverbial. We have an adverbial, subordinate clause, and now we are going to diagram our imperative sentence, our complex sentence with our adverbial clause. And again, you are welcome to jot this down, try and fill it out, and uh, or you can just follow along as I'm doing it. We always start with our independent clause first. So our subject goes in our first section. Our subject is what? We have our implied you. So our implied you is gonna go in our subject space. And then we have an intransitive verb. It's not being transferred to anything else. So we don't have anything else there but our verb. You sit. And then we have a connector when we look at our adverbial clause. While. While is connecting and it's adverbial. It's modifying the verb directly so we've connected our verbs. Okay. Our first section is going to be always our subject. So we put our subject there. 
we are going to then put what next in our space, our verbs modifying verbs. So our verb goes here, our verb space, that's where they're connected. We have an indirect object, and just like in our sentence, it's going to be diagrammed the same. It'll be between our transitive verb and between our direct object. Our indirect object, our direct object, and then our modifier. Which plate? A plate. And that is it. It's a reminder how we do our imperative, complex sentences, identifying our clauses, our adverbial clause. Um, as far as recommendations, if you are with CC, um, first and second year students may want to look back at chart BB um, just to study, look at what's familiar, familiarize yourself with it, just look at some of the words. Some are going to be familiar, some are going to be new, studying that. And then if you're you know, more advanced second year, third year, you may want to look at um, this week's chart CC for passive voice and do the same um, exercises you may have that you can do to study or just reading, looking at what's familiar, memorizing. Um, but that's it. I hope you guys found this helpful. You can leave me a comment, a like, um, subscribe and hit notifications if you'd like to see some more videos. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for coming along on this learning journey with me. I uh, wish you guys well and I will see you next time. Bye.